Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being with us today. We're really glad you're here. We pray our service will be a blessing to you. There are three main festivals that our Christian church here is built around. Uh, first one, of course, Christmas. We think of Jesus entering th into the world. Uh, then we think of, well, combination of Good Friday and Easter, Jesus paying for our sins, rising from the dead. And then the third one is Pentecost, when we think of Jesus sending the Holy Spirit to his people to equip them for service. And that, of course, is what we celebrate today. And that's what we'll take a look at in our service. We start on the bottom of page three with the invocation. Why don't we pause for a moment for private meditation and then we'll begin the service. We'll begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I rejoiced with those who said to me, Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, praise his name. Tell about his glory among the nations. For great is the Lord and worthy of great praise. We'll pray. Holy Spirit, God and Lord, come to us this joyful day with your gifts of grace. Kindle in our hearts the holy fire of your love, so that in a true and living faith we may tell abroad the glory of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Father, one God, now and forever. May God the Holy Spirit work on our hearts to lead us to recognize and believe the truth about our sins and God's salvation. Dear Father in heaven, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I was sinful the instant my life started at conception because of the sins of thought, word, and deed that I have committed I admit that I have earned and deserve your curse and everlasting punishment. As a humble and contrite sinner, I ask you to have mercy on me and to forgive me because of the perfect life and innocent death of your Son, Jesus. Be of good cheer, you who sorrow over sin. Because of Jesus' perfect life and innocent death, God the Father has declared us to be not guilty in his sight and has forgiven all our sins. Jesus' resurrection is proof that God the Father has done this. Rejoice and be glad. The Lord will not treat you as your sins deserve. You can be sure that God will always love you, care for you, and bless you. 
Eternal life is yours as a free gift through Jesus. We'll continue by reading responsively scripture verses that talk about the Holy Spirit and his work. Now the Lord is the Spirit. However, an unspiritual person does not accept the truths caught by God's Spirit. No one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. But we are always obligated to thank God for you, brothers loved by the Lord. He saved us, not by righteous works that we did ourselves, but because of his mercy. For by one Spirit we, are all, we all were baptized into one body. Do you not know that you yourselves are God's temple? Prophecy ever came by the will of man. All scripture is God breathed. There are various kinds of gifts, but the same spirit. Each person is given a manifestation of the Spirit. The Lord says, I will put my Spirit within you and will cause you to walk in my statutes. If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, what the mind of the Spirit is.
final scripture lesson today, we'll read selected verses from Acts 2, taken from Peter's Pentecost sermon, where he talks about the, the work of Jesus and points people then to turn to Jesus and repent. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus the Nazarene was a man recommended to you by God with miracles, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know. This man who was handed over by God's set plan and foreknowledge, you killed by having lawless men nail him to a cross. He is the one God raised up by freeing him from the agony of death, because death was not able to hold him in its grip. We are all witnesses of that. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know for certain that God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Gentlemen, brothers, what should we do? Peter answered them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far away, as many as the Lord our God will call. These are the words of the Lord. We'll continue with the next hymn. will rise. The gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. 
The words we'll consider today as we celebrate the festival of Pentecost are written in the second chapter of the Old Testament book of Joel. We start with verse 28. After this, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Even on the servants, both male and female, I will pour out my spirit in those days. This is God's word. Please be seated. In the name of God, the Holy Spirit, who works in our hearts to give us God's blessings, dear children of God, do you have the Holy Spirit? If, you were, if somebody were to ask you that question, what would you say? Hmm? Has the Holy Spirit come on you? And I think so. But then again, I'm not sure. I've never had a tongue of fire on my head. I can't do miracles. I'm not able to speak in another language without having studied it. I don't do those things. Maybe, does that mean the Holy Spirit hasn't come on me? He has. You have the Holy Spirit. You wouldn't be believers in Jesus if the Holy Spirit hadn't come to you, right? Because we know no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. But what about those gifts the disciples had? You know, it seems you hear stories about things, but those things aren't very common anymore, are they? Well, the Lord is God. The Lord does whatever he wants. And at every period of time, he knows just what needs to be done in order to carry out the work of his kingdom. So maybe things are different today, but there's one thing that hasn't changed. The Lord still pours out his Holy Spirit. And that's what we'd like to use as our theme today as we look at these words of God before us. The Lord pours out, he still pours out his Holy Spirit. And two things we'll know. He pours out the Holy Spirit to people to give them saving faith. He pours the Holy Spirit out on people to give them gifts for serving. We note the words. Even on your servants, both male and female, I will pour out my Spirit in those days. So speaking through the prophet Joel, the Lord is talking about things that were going to happen in those days. And what does that mean? Well, in the Old Testament, that expression usually looks ahead and refers to the time of the New Testament, the time between Jesus' first and second coming. And he says that during those days at that time, I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. Now, the, the Israelites were God's chosen people. But the truth is, God wants all people to be saved. It was through the Israelites that the Savior came into the world to accomplish salvation for all people. God wants all people to be saved, and so the Holy Spirit will be there to work in people from all over the world at every period of time to work in their hearts so that, well, they have faith. And we know, of course, it's through faith that we enjoy the blessings of salvation that Jesus is one. Eh? We think of gifts of the Holy Spirit. The single most important gift of the Spirit is the gift of saving faith that we know and we enjoy personally those blessings, the greatest blessings of all that Jesus has won for us, right? To know my sins are forgiven, that regardless of what my mistakes are, God doesn't hate me. He's not going to turn against me. He forgives me. To be sure that at all times He loves me, that even when He tests me and, and takes me through uh, difficult times and painful hardships. Even then, he loves me, he's with me, and he's going to work to bless me. He's going to work for my good. To know that God does listen to me always. And maybe I don't get the answers that I like always, but I know he always gives the answer that's truly best for me. To know that I'm going to live forever. Eh? I'll live here. When the time comes, God will take me to be with him and enjoy that bliss and glory that are beyond anything I could ever imagine. 
We have the greatest gifts of all. Jesus has won them for us. The Holy Spirit has given us the gift of faith so that we enjoy those blessings as our own. And of course, the Holy Spirit has his tools to do that, right? He works through the Word of God, the Gospel, either by itself or with baptism to bring us to faith. He uses the Word by itself or with baptism or with bread and wine in the Lord's Supper to then strengthen that faith. And he uses that Word then to keep on building us up, to keep on equipping us for service in this kingdom. Okay? And, of course, the Lord wants people to know his word, and so he wants us to share that word with others, and so he gives us gifts that will enable us to serve. And he talks about that here. He says, After this I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Even your, or your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Even on the servants, both male and female, I will pour out my spirit in those days. Again, it wouldn't just be the Israelites who would be receiving spiritual gifts from God. It, all people. God gives his spiritual gifts to everyone. To each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. All so we can work together so that people can know God's word. Now he mentions here two, two things. He talks about dreams and visions. And he talks about Prophecy. Prophecy, well, literally it's receiving words from God that you then share with others. And how do people receive words from God? Well, at times the Lord has given his words through a dream or through a vision. You think of Joseph, the stepfather of Jesus. In a dream he was told, it's okay to take Mary as your wife. In a dream he was told, Get up, take the child and his mother. You've got to get out of here because Herod wants to kill the child. Eh? In a dream, he was said, yeah, you might not want to go back to Judea. And they end up going then to Nazareth. Or you think of the Old Testament, you think of Ezekiel, you think of Isaiah, or even the Apostle Paul, visions where the Lord gave his word to them what he wanted them to know. Now, obviously God can do anything, right? But, we need to be careful. Just because you have a vivid dream, that doesn't necessarily mean it's from God. And sometimes uh, people will say that, I had this vivid dream that I'm, that I'm supposed to do this or that. Well, the sinful nature, the sinful mind can produce ideas in our minds. Uh, there's times when dreams are nothing more than your subconscious bringing out things that uh, have been going on in your mind, eh? The devil himself can try to mess with our minds and fill us with thoughts, okay? Uh, some of us have probably had dreams where, you know, there were sinful things going on there and we woke up and, oh man, why did I dream that? Hmm? So you can't use dreams as a guide. You can't be sure. There's only one place where we can be sure this is indeed God speaking to me and that is in his word, right? Inspired by the Holy Spirit, so we know the truth that God wants us to know. We have the promises that we can be sure of, and it's that word that he wants us then to share with others. And to do that, then, he gives us gifts, all of us. As we quoted earlier, each person or to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. Hmm? Nobody can say, you know, I'm no good, I can't do anything. Hmm? Uh, no matter who you are, God has given you a, a talents, abilities that can be used in service to him and to others. And he says, we have different gifts according to the grace God has given us. And what are some of those gifts? Well, we think sometimes of speaking gifts. We think of preaching and teaching, especially um, evangelism, encouragement. Hmm? Some people just seem to know just what promise of God to give to a person at just the time that they need it. Some people just seem to know the right words to say to build people up, to encourage them. 
Some people seem to have a knack for talking to an unchurched person in such a way that uh, they listen. And then through the Word, the Spirit starts to do His work. Some people are not afraid to go to maybe somebody they don't know very well and talk to them. Some people are not afraid to go to uh, a Christian who has drifted away or fallen into a sin and to tell them, uh, you know what God says about what you're doing? Okay? Do you realize the danger you could be causing to yourself, to your faith? You think of the mother or maybe the grandmother sitting down with little ones and telling them Bible stories. Or even parents when they discipline their children and telling them, this was a sin. This is not what God wants you to do. Okay? And then reminding them that, yeah, I'm, I'm going to punish you, but you know I still love you, and you know God still loves you, and God forgives you. See? Those are all from the, the, the gifts of the Spirit to be able to do that. Uh, parents reading devotions when, with their families. Hmm? All those things. And again, he mentions both young and old, even little ones. We're surprised sometimes uh, at what they do or what they say, but the Holy Spirit is in them too. And they too can, can encourage people. Like the the child talking to mom saying, it's okay, mom. God is with you. Or maybe the, the little girl talking to grandpa saying, God loves you, grandpa. God will take care of you. Even little things like that. It's all from the Spirit's work giving gifts. So some of those gifts, again, go with, with speaking. Okay? Uh, but not all of us have that gift. Not all of us feel comfortable doing that. Then there's other gifts we call, well, we refer to them often as serving gifts, things that need to be done so that the speaking of the Word can be done. Even something as basic as being able to have a church service, right? The serving gifts that need to be used so that hmm, there can be bulletins, so there can be a PowerPoint, or taking care of our ground so that people don't drive by and look, oh man, look at that place. Ugh. Nobody seems to care about that church. I don't think I'd want to go there. Rather, they see something that's nice and well kept and may put the thought, hmm, what a nice church. Maybe that's something to think about, eh? The cleaning that takes place, uh, not everyone enjoy, enjoys doing it, but it's got to be done if we want things to be the best that they can be, eh? A uh, story is told, oh, this is probably maybe 70 years ago, even longer, of a young man who was born in Africa and he had a deformity in his mouth so that he couldn't speak very well. Well, eventually a missionary came, talked to him, and the Holy Spirit worked in his heart. He came to faith. And he wanted to serve, and he kind of latched on to the missionary and basically said, here, I can show you how to get to this village. I can take you to this village. Uh, here, I can take care of things for you. I can uh, fix things. I can clean things. Sometimes even preparing meals, taking care of all those things so the missionary could get where he needed to be and share God's Word with others. And the temptation is there sometimes. I mean, certain things get more attention. Obviously, the person who's up in front talking, or the teacher in the school. Um, we notice what they do, and it's easy to think, wow, they're important, and think, well, you know, I just come and clean once in a while. It's all important. And just because somebody else does one thing that maybe gets them more attention, that doesn't mean what they do is more important than what you do. It doesn't mean that they're more important than what you do. All of us, with our gifts, with the service we give, we're all important. We're all needed so that this all-important work can get done. And it is the greatest and most important work of all. Hmm? Uh, maybe you remember the old joke of the, of the man who was working with the circus. And he was traveling around with them. 
and his job was to clean the cages where the animals were kept. And, oh, a messy, oh, smelly job, and, it, oh. And finally, you know, he was doing this, finally somebody said, why do you do that? Why don't you just quit? And he said, what, and give up show business? He, he thought that show business was so important that he wanted to do even the most menial job just to be a part of it. Well, we've got the greatest and most important work of all, right? To get out the life-saving gospel of Jesus hmm? so that others can have what we have. To know my God loves me. He's forgiven me. He doesn't hold things against me. He's going to guide me. He's going to help me through life. And one day I'm going to be in heaven and I'm going to be perfect. We've got it. We want others to have it as well. And God does too. And so he gives us gifts. And regardless of what they are, we can use them to be a part of the most important work of all. So sometimes maybe we just say, Maybe we don't feel useful in God's church. So maybe the prayer, Lord, what are the gifts you've given to me? Help me to see them. Help me to develop them. Help me to use them so that I can have a part in your work so that others can be blessed the way you've blessed me. And uh, we can be sure that God will answer that prayer. He will help us because... The Lord gives His Spirit. The Lord still gives His Holy Spirit, even today. Amen. You may remain seated. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. We continue with the third article. Let us review the work of the Holy Spirit as we speak the third article of the Apostles' Creed and Luther's explanation of it. We read, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. What does this mean? I believe that I cannot, by my own thinking or choosing, Believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. In the same way, he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In this Christian church, he daily and fully forgives all sins to me and all believers. On the last day, he will raise me and all the dead and give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ. This is most certainly true. And we'll continue with the offering, and as we gather it, we'll sing the posted hymn verses.
You may remain seated and we'll continue with the response of prayer. If you're following in the bulletin, we're on page 10. Dear Father, your Son Jesus promised that you would send the Holy Spirit to those who ask. Dear, please, dear Father, may the Holy Spirit work in our hearts so that we will always recognize the truth about our sins and trust in Jesus as our Savior, who washed away our sins with his innocent suffering and death. Lord, we know the Holy Spirit uses the means of grace, the good news about Jesus in the Bible, in baptism, and in the Lord's Supper to create and strengthen faith in our hearts. Lord, we know that the Holy Spirit inspired every word of the Bible and works through the words of the Bible to lead us to know the truth about Jesus, our Savior, and to equip us for every good work. <clears throat> Lord, it is the Holy Spirit who gives us gifts so that each one of us can serve you in a special way in this world. May he also enable us to develop these gifts and to use those gifts faithfully in harmony with the words of the Bible. We ask you, dear Father, to grant this request out of faithfulness to yourself, your Son, Jesus, and your word. We offer two special prayers today, Lord. First of all, for Taryn Flack, who will be leaving this week to start basic training in the Air National Guard. We ask, Lord, that you would watch over her, keep her strength, or keep her safe, give her the strength she needs to go through this training. Please, Lord, help her to keep her eyes focused on you, keep her from falling into sin, keep her from losing her faith. Help her in all things to bring honor to you and to bring glory to others. Please bless her, Lord, and enable, her, and enable her to be a true and faithful servant for our country. We also pray for Eva Raywartz, who is hospitalized. We ask, Lord, that you would grant her healing and enable her to return to her home soon. As always, Lord, help her and all of us to focus on your promises and to enjoy the strength and comfort that they give to us. Hear us now, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. Dear Father, we ask that you bless us as we pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And we'll continue with the next hymn. <clears throat>
me pray. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you for the privilege of gathering together today with our fellow Christians to hear your word and to offer you our prayers, our praises, and our offerings. We ask you to guide us and watch over us at all times, wherever we might go in our lives. Please nurture and protect us spiritually, emotionally, and physically. Keep us in saving faith. Use us in your service, and when the time is right, take us to be with you in the blessed joys of heaven. We pray this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The undeserved gift of God, the one who believes in the Son, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. <coughs> and we'll close with the final embers. Good morning once again. Thank you for being with us today. We're glad you're here. Special welcome to our visitors today. We're, we're glad you're here. We pray our service was a blessing to you. A couple of things we'll point out. First of all, uh, this coming week, uh, we have a request. We're going to start a new Bible information class on Thursdays. And it'll start at 645 with the goal of being done, well, 830 or so, and everyone can be home by 9 o'clock. So if you want to take a review of, our, of the basics of the Christian faith, or if you know somebody who would like to find out more about our church, uh, we encourage you to invite them to join us. So Thursdays at 6.45. Uh, this morning, man, we had a request. Uh, we're going to start our 19-minute oh, Bible studies. So we'll take a little time, maybe get some coffee, cookies, whatever, and we'll head into the fireside room in 15 minutes, maybe a little longer. We'll do a little Bible study. So... Uh, we'll visit a little bit, and then we'll head in there. Uh, as is noted there, and we prayed last week, our new teacher is uh, on her way, Miss Amy Duncan. We pray that uh, she'll be a blessing to us and will be a blessing to her. As is our custom, we'd like to have a welcome shower for her. So if you'd like to give a gift card or a cash donation or something, you can bring them to the office and give them to, to Penny or to me. I think the other things, we well, can note the rummage say on the bottom of 13, um, and again, we're thinking of starting Jesus Cares again next fall, so you can take a look at those at your leisure. We'll say thank you for being here, everyone. Good morning, and God bless you. <laughs>